Andreas Vesalius was an anatomist, physician, and author of one of the most influential books on human anatomy, the Humana Corporis Fabrica. Vesalius is often referred to as the founder of modern human anatomy. He was born in Brussels, which though now part of Belgium, was then part of the Habsburg Netherlands. He was professor at the University of Padua and later became imperial physician at the court of Emperor Charles V. Andreas Vesalius is the Latinized form of the Dutch Andries van Vesel, a common practice among European scholars in his time. His name is also given as Andrea Vesalius, André Vesal, Andrea Vesalio, Andreas Vesal, André Vesalio and André Vesal F. Or. Early Life and Education Vesalius was born as Andreas van Vesel to father Anders van Vesel and mother Isabel Crabbe on 31 December 1514, in Brussels, which was then part of the Habsburg Netherlands. His great-grandfather, Jan van Vesel, probably born in Vesel, received his medical degree from the University of Pavia and taught medicine in 1428 at the then newly founded University of Leuven. His grandfather, Everard van Vesel, was the royal physician of Emperor Maximilian, while his father, Anders van Vesel, went on to serve as apothecary to Maximilian, and later valet de chamber to his successor Charles V. Anders encouraged his son to continue in the family tradition, and enrolled him in the Brethren of the Common Life in Brussels to learn Greek and Latin prior to learning medicine, according to standards of the era. In 1528 Vesalius entered the University of Leuven taking arts, but when his father was appointed as the valet de chamber in 1532, he decided to pursue a career in the military at the University of Paris, where he moved to in 1533. There he studied the theories of Galen under the auspices of Jacques Dubois and Jean Fernel. It was during this time that he developed his interest in anatomy, and was often found examining heads at the Cemetery of the Innocents. Vesalius was forced to leave Paris in 1537 owing to the opening of hostilities between the Holy Roman Empire and France, and returned to Leuven. Here he completed his studies under Johann Winter von Anden Aschen graduated the next year. His thesis, Paraphrasis in Nonium Librum Raisi Medici Arabis Claris, Ad Regum Al Mansorum de Effectuum Singularum Corporis Partium Curationa, was a commentary on the Ninth Book of Raises. He remained at Leuven only briefly before leaving after a dispute with his professor. After settling briefly in Venice in 1536, he moved to the University of Padua to study for his doctorate, which he received in 1537. Medical career The day of his graduation, he was immediately offered the chair of surgery and anatomy at Padua. He also guest lectured at Bologna and Pisa. Prior to arriving in Padua, Vesalius travelled through Italy, and assisted the future Pope Paul IV and Ignatius of Loyola healing those afflicted by Hansen's disease. In Venice, he met his illustrator Johann van Kalkar, a student of Titian. It was with van Kalkar that Vesalius published his first anatomical text, Tabulae Sex, in 1538. Previously, these topics had been taught primarily from reading classical texts, mainly Galen, followed by an animal dissection by a barber surgeon whose work was directed by the lecturer. No attempt was made actually to check Galen's claims, these were considered unassailable. Vesalius, in contrast, performed dissection as the primary teaching tool, handling the actual work himself and urging students to perform dissection themselves. Hands-on direct observation was considered the only reliable resource, a huge break with medieval practice. He created detailed illustrations of anatomy for students in the form of six large woodcut anatomical posters. When he found that some of these were being widely copied, he published them all in 1538 under the title Tabulae Anatomicae Sex. He followed this in 1539 with an updated version of Ginter's anatomical handbook, Institutionis Anatomicet. In 1539 he also published his Venice section letter, On Bloodletting, 
This was a popular treatment for almost any illness, but there was some debate about where to take the blood from. The classical Greek procedure, advocated by Galen, was to let blood from a site near the location of the illness. However, the Muslim and medieval practice was to draw a smaller amount of blood from a distant location. Vesalius, a pamphlet generally supported Galen's view, but with qualifications that rejected the infiltration of Galen. In 1541, while in Bologna, Vesalius uncovered the fact that all of Galen's research had been based upon animal rather than human anatomy, since dissection had been banned in ancient Rome. Galen had dissected Barbary macaques instead, and argued that they would be anatomically similar to humans. He also contributed to the new Junta edition of Galen's collected works and began writing his own anatomical text, until Vesalius pointed out Galen's substitution of animal for human anatomy. It had gone unnoticed and had long been the basis of studying human anatomy. However, some people still chose to follow Galen and resented Vesalius for calling attention to such glaring mistakes. Galen assumed that arteries carried the purest blood to higher organs such as the brain and lungs from the left ventricle of the heart, while veins carried blood to the lesser organs such as the stomach from the right ventricle. In order that this theory could be correct, some sort of holes were needed to interconnect the ventricles, and so in the spirit of Galen's time, he claimed to have found them, adjusting the facts to suit his theory. So paramount was the authority of Galen that for 1400 years a succession of anatomists had claimed to find these holes until finally Vesalius admitted he could not find them. Nonetheless, he did not venture to dispute Galen on the distribution of blood, and so imagined that it diffused through the unbroken partition between the ventricles. Other famous examples of Vesalius disproving Galen's assertions were his discoveries that the lower jaw was only one bone, not two, and that humans lack the reti mirabili, a network of blood vessels at the base of the brain that is found in sheep and other ungulates. In 1543, Vesalius conducted a public dissection of the body of Jacob Cara von Gebweiler, the notorious felon from the city of Basel, Switzerland. He assembled the bones and finally donated the skeleton to the University of Basel. This preparation is Vesalius' our only well-preserved skeletal preparation today, and is also the world's oldest surviving anatomical preparation. It is still displayed at the Anatomical Museum of the University of Basel. In the same year Vesalius took residence in Basel to help Johannes Oporinus publish the seven-volume De Humana Corporis Fabrica, a groundbreaking work of human anatomy that he dedicated to Charles V. Many believe it was illustrated by Titian's pupil Jan Stephen van Kalkar, but evidence is lacking, and it is unlikely that a single artist created all 273 illustrations in a period of time so short. At about the same time he published an abridged edition for students, Andrea Vesali I Suorin de Humana Corporis Fabrica Librorum Epitome, and dedicated it to Philip II of Spain, son of the emperor. Though Vesalius' work was not the first such work based on actual autopsy, nor even the first work of this era, the production values, highly detailed and intricate plates, and the likelihood that the artists who produced it were clearly present in person at the dissections made it into an instant classic. Pirated editions were available almost immediately, an event Vesalius acknowledged in a printer's note would happen. Vesalius was 28 years old when the first edition of Fabrica was published, Imperial Physician and Death. Soon after publication, Vesalius was invited as Imperial Physician to the court of Emperor Charles V. He informed the Venetian Senate that he was leaving his post in Padua, which prompted Duke Cosimo Ida Medici to invite him to move to the expanding university in Pisa, which he refused. Vesalius took up a position in the court, where he had to deal with the other physicians mocking him as being a barber. Over the next 11 years Vesalius travelled with the court, treating injuries from battle or tournaments, performing post-mortems 
administering medications, and writing private letters addressing specific medical questions. During these years he also wrote the Epistle on the China Route, a short text on the properties of a medical plant whose efficacy he doubted, as well as defense of his anatomical findings. This elicited a new round of attacks on his work that called for him to be punished by the emperor. In 1551, Charles V commissioned an inquiry in Salamanca to investigate the religious implications of his methods. Vesalius' work was cleared by the board, but the attacks continued. Four years later one of his main detractors and one-time professors Jacobus Silvius published an article that claimed that the human body itself had changed since Galen had studied it. After the abdication of Emperor Charles V he continued at court in great favor with his son Philip II, who rewarded him with a pension for life by making him a Count Palatine. In 1555 he published a revised edition of De Humana Corporis Fabrica. In 1564 Vesalius went on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, some said, after being accused of dissecting a living body. He sailed with the Venetian fleet under James Malatesta via Cyprus. When he reached Jerusalem, he received a message from the Venetian Senate requesting him again to accept the Paduan professorship, which had become vacant by the death of his friend and pupil Fallopius. After struggling for many days with the adverse winds in the Ionian Sea, he was wrecked on the island of Zacanthos. Here he soon died in such debt that a benefactor kindly paid for his funeral. At the time of his death he was scarcely fifty years of age. He was buried somewhere in the island of Corfu. For many years it was assumed that Vesalius's pilgrimage was due to pressures of the Inquisition. Today this is generally considered to be without foundation and is dismissed by modern biographers. It appears the story was spread by Hubert Langay, a diplomat under Emperor Charles V and then under the Prince of Orange, who claimed in 1565 that Vesalius had performed an autopsy on an aristocrat in Spain when the heart was still beating, leading to the Inquisition condemning him to death. The story went on to claim that Philip II had the sentence commuted to a pilgrimage. The story resurfaced several times over the next few years, living on until recent times. Publications The Humana Corporis Fabrica on the Fabric of the Human Body in 1543 Vesalius asked Johannes Oporinus to publish the book De Humana Corporis Fabrica, a groundbreaking work of human anatomy he dedicated to Charles V and which many believe was illustrated by Titian's pupil Jan Stephen van Kaukar though others believe it was illustrated by different artists working in the studio of Titian, and not from Van Kalkar himself. About the same time he published another version of his great work, entitled De Humana Corporis Fabrica Librorum Epitome more commonly known as the Epitome, with a stronger focus on illustrations than text, so as to help readers easily understand his findings. The actual text of the epitome was an abridged form of his work in the Fabrica, and the organization of the two books was quite varied. He dedicated it to Philip II of Spain, son of the emperor. The Fabrica emphasized the priority of dissection and what has come to be called the anatomical view of the body, seeing human internal functioning as an essentially corporeal structure filled with organs arranged in three-dimensional space. This was in stark contrast to many of the anatomical models used previously, which had strong Galenic Aristotelian elements, as well as elements of astrology. Although modern anatomical texts had been published by Mondino and Beringer, much of their work was clouded by their reverence for Galen and Arabian doctrines. Besides the first good description of the sphenoid bone, he showed that the sternum consists of three portions and the sacrum of five or six, and described accurately the vestibule in the interior of the temporal bone. He not only verified SGN's observations on the valves of the hepatic veins, but he described the vena as igus, and discovered the canal which passes in the fetus between the umbilical vein and the vena cava, since named ductus venosus. He described the omentum and its connections with the stomach. 
the spleen and the colon, gave the first correct views of the structure of the pylorus, observed the small size of the cecal appendix in man, gave the first good account of the mediastinum and pleura and the fullest description of the anatomy of the brain yet advanced. He did not understand the inferior recesses, and his account of the nerves is confused by regarding the optic as the first pair, the third as the fifth and the fifth as the seventh. In this work, Vesalius also becomes the first person to describe mechanical ventilation. It is largely this achievement that has resulted in Vesalius being incorporated into the Australian and New Zealand College of Anaesthetist College, Arms and Crest. Excerpts When I undertake the dissection of the human pelvis I pass a stout rope tied like a noose beneath the lower jaw and through the zygomas up to the top of the head. The lower end of the noose I run through a pulley fixed to a beam in the room so that I may raise or lower the cadaver as it hangs there or turn around in any direction to suit my purpose. You must take care not to put the noose around the neck, unless some of the muscles connected to the occipital bone have already been cut away. Other publications in 1538, Vesalius wrote Epistola, Docens Vena Maxillarum Dextri Cubiti in Dolore Lateralis Secandum, commonly known as the Venisection Letter, which demonstrated a revived Venisection a classical procedure in which blood was drawn near the site of the ailment. He sought to locate the precise site for venisection in pleurisy within the framework of the classical method. The real significance of the book is his attempt to support his arguments by the location and continuity of the venous system from his observations, rather than appeal to earlier published works. With this novel approach to the problem of venisection, Vesalius posed that and striking hypothesis that anatomical dissection might be used to test speculation. In 1546, three years after the Fabrica, he wrote his Epistola Ration M. Modum Quo Propinandi Radicis China Decocta, commonly known as the Epistle on the China Route. Ostensibly an appraisal of a popular but ineffective treatment for gout, syphilis, and stone. This work is especially important as a continued polemic against Galenism and a reply to critics in the camp of his former professor Jacobus Silvius, now an obsessive detractor. In February 1561, Vesalius was given a copy of Gabriel Fallopio's Observationis Anatomicae, friendly additions and corrections to the Fabrica. Before the end of the year Vesalius composed a cordial reply, Anatomicarum Gabrielis Fallopii Observationim Examen, generally referred to as the Examen. In this work he recognizes in Fallopio a true equal in the science of dissection he had done so much to create. Vesalius A Reply to Fallopio was published in May 1564, a month after Vesalius' a death on the Greek island of Zante.